Thank you for joining us today for the Living Well Beyond Cancer Survivorship Series. The goal of this series is to provide those whose lives have been affected by cancer with the tools and resources to live well beyond cancer. The team at Revital want to enable you to do things that make you, you. Things like continuing to work, spending time with your family, enjoying a meal, returning to the gym, or in any activity which brings you joy. Our therapists are trained to help you identify and achieve goals specific to you. It is my honor to introduce today's presenter, Karen Holtz. Karen has been a member of Rush Physical Therapy since 1996. She has worked in the outpatient setting since 1990. Karen specializes in treating patients who benefit from lymphedema, revital oncology rehabilitation, gait training, orthopedic rehabilitation, and sports medicine services. Karen completed her undergraduate education at Marquette University and received a Master's of Health Science from the University of Indianapolis. She is also Further certification and training in gyro needling and lymphedema from the Norton School and became a Revital Certified Clinician in 2021. She and her husband have two children and enjoy skiing, hiking, and spending time with their family. After our presentation today, we will do a live Q&A. Please add any questions you have in the Q&A message box on your screen. All questions can only be viewed by the panel members. If we were not able to get to it today, we will contact you with an answer via email later this week. A reminder, this material is not intended to represent methods and or procedures available for the medical conditions discussed, but is only intended to present an approach, view, statement or opinion of the presenter, which may be helpful or of interest to patients, caregivers, or practitioners. Under no circumstances is the information provided to serve as medical advice. Before we close today, we'll also review upcoming topics and how you can find a cancer rehabilitation specialist in your area. So please enjoy our presentation today and we look forward to the live Q&A at the end of the video. Thank you. We seem to be having an issue with the audio. Please just give us one moment and we'll get that sorted. Thank you.
Please bear with us. We're having some technical issues with our audio. As soon as we get this rectified, you will be able to hear this wonderful presentation. In the meantime, if you have questions about cancer-induced peripheral neuropathy for our expert panel, please put them in the Q&A box. Beyond Cancer Survivor Series. Today's topic is how to function when you can't feel, understanding peripheral neuropathy. Thank you for joining us today. Hello, my name is Karen Holtz and I'm a physical therapist, certified lymphedema and revital certified therapist for Rush Physical Therapy in the Chicagoland market. I'm excited to speak with you today about CIPN or chemo-induced peripheral neuropathy, as this is a prevalent side effect that I treat in patients associated with their cancer treatment. I became passionate about working in oncology when I received my lymphedema certification over 10 years ago. Throughout our presentation today, you will have a better understanding of chemo-induced peripheral neuropathy, learn what common symptoms are for CIPN, You'll gain an understanding of how cancer rehabilitation may help manage your symptoms. And lastly, identify three potential ways to manage your CIPN. Cancer is a journey and we recognize not everyone's path is the same. Everyone starts in a different place. Your age, your beliefs, your support system of family and friends, your general health or well-being, among other factors that contribute to where you are at the beginning. Also, your destination may be different. Where are you going? Is your destination finishing treatment and putting cancer behind you? Is it living with a chronic condition, managing side effects to lead as normal and independent of a life as possible? Your destination is determined by the goal set between you and your medical team. Once diagnosed with cancer, your path may take you through different treatment choices, surgery, chemotherapy, targeted therapy, radiation, which are all customized by your cancer care team to meet your needs and get you to your destination. With this specialized treatment, each person's side effects and intensity of side effects will vary as well. The tolerance to treatment will be impacted by your general well being and where you started at your diagnoses. Our team wants to help you keep your motor running smoothly throughout your experience to your destination. So, what is chemo-induced peripheral neuropathy, or CIPN. Chemo-induced peripheral neuropathy describes damage to the peripheral nervous system, the system that transmits information between the central nervous system, for example, the brain and the spinal cord, and the rest of the body, caused by some chemotherapy agents. Traditional chemotherapy agents causing CIPN are the platinum, taxanes, and vinca alkaloid medications. Examples of these include taxanes, platinum drugs such as cisplatin and carboplatin, plant alkaloids such as vincristine and vinblastine. CIPN is a common side effect experienced by many people affected by cancer. You may have asked yourself one of these questions or one similar. Will it go away once I'm done with treatment? Why is it hard to button my shirt? Can my neuropathy cause me to fall? Does everyone get neuropathy? We are here to help you better understand CIPN and how rehabilitation can help you return to what matters most to you. There is no way to prevent chemo-induced peripheral neuropathy or CIPN, but there are things you can do to manage your symptoms. Sometimes these symptoms go away a short time after treatment is done, but sometimes they can last much longer. Your symptoms of CIPN are very important to discuss with your cancer care team at any point along the cancer continuum because CIPN increases your risk of falling and makes other daily activities more difficult. We will go into this a little bit more in detail later. So now let's take a moment to better understand the symptoms of CIPN. The most common symptoms are numbness and tingling and a stocking glove pattern of the hands and feet. That means it is present in either both hands or both feet or all four. It typically starts at the toes and fingers and works its way up like a sock or a glove. Just because you have symptoms in your hands or feet doesn't mean it will develop in the opposite. We often see it more, however, in the feet than the hands. CIPN may present with a variety of other symptoms. 
let's take a moment to consider the variety of symptoms. Have you experienced any of these symptoms since starting chemotherapy? Do you have any tingling, numbness, burning in the hands or feet? Have you noticed any increased clumsiness and difficulty holding small objects? Do you have any decreased sensation to light touch, temperature, proprioception, which is the ability of the body to sense movement, action, and location? And without this, you wouldn't be able to move without thinking about your next step. Have you experienced any weakness, especially in the hands and feet? All of these may lead to a feeling of being unsteady on your feet, or you may have difficulty with walking. You may also have the symptoms of cramping in the hands and feet. Have you had any dizziness, blurred vision, or difficulty hearing? No, you are not alone, and there are many ways we can help manage them. Chemo-induced neuropathy may be a side effect of commonly used chemotherapies or immunotherapies such as Taxol, thalidomide, and oxaliplatin. Some of these medications may also be given in high doses or for long periods of time, which may increase the risk of developing neuropathy. It is important to know not all chemos cause neuropathy. There are other causes of neuropathy as well, such as radiation or surgery, where the nerves may be impacted. While not everybody develops neuropathy, there are some known risk factors that may increase the risk of developing it, such as age, diabetes, and a prior history of any other type of neuropathy. There are multiple chemotherapy agents that are known to be neurotoxic. It is important to discuss your treatment plan with your provider to understand if neuropathy is a potential side effect or if you have any other risk factors to consider. So what does this all mean in terms of changes in our ability to participate in normal life activities? If you are experiencing numbness in your feet, do you have difficulty walking on grass or uneven surfaces? Will neuropathy affect your ability to walk a while, either in a park or a grocery store? Can you grasp the grocery cart or pick up a small item off the shelf, especially if you need to reach away from your body? Are you unsure of how tight you can hold that bag of broccoli? Can you pick up the correct coins to pay at the register? CIPN does not know age, gender, or race. It affects people in different ways, and the impact on your life is very specific to you. My goal as a Revital Cancer Rehabilitation Certified Therapist is to work with my patients to return them to what matters the most to them. We have seen some examples of CIPN and its effect on life, so now let us take a look at the daily activities that are commonly limited in those who experience it. Because CIPN can affect both hands at the same time, often fine motor skills can be altered. These are activities that require small, precise, coordinated movements, such as tying a shoe or buttoning a shirt. There may also be difficulties grasping small objects such as utensils or items for self-care such as combs or brushes. Now let's think about the impact of having both of our feet affected with CIPN. We have previously learned that those with CIPN are at greater risk for falls. When our feet are numb, tingling, or burning, it causes our feet to be less able to tolerate changes in surfaces and speed to react to these changes. It can also affect our ability to wear the most appropriate footwear due to pain. All of these are taken into consideration by the cancer rehabilitation therapist during an individualized evaluation. Let's start with two few questions to ask yourself. These are things your doctor or nurse or anyone else in your cancer care team may have already asked you during your visits. As we go through the questions, make a note of any of the questions you say yes to. Have you fallen or almost fallen? Have you had a fear of falling or any other balance troubles? Have you had changes to your vision or hearing? Do you have difficulty buttoning a shirt or typing on a keyboard? Do you ever drop things such as a coffee cup or small utensils? Do you have tingling, numbness in your hands or feet? If you said yes to any of these questions, you may benefit from cancer rehabilitation. I'm going to take a moment now for you to get to know one of my patients who said yes to some of these questions. So let's meet Linda. Linda was diagnosed with breast cancer and began taking Taxol, which is a chemotherapy agent which is known to cause CIPN. 
She started having her symptoms about one month after starting her chemotherapy. Over the next four years, she described symptoms worsening, especially in her feet, although she did have some symptoms in her hands. She was only able to tolerate flip-flop type shoes. Anything across the top of her feet caused severe pressure and pain. She reported that she could not stand for very long periods before needing to sit down. She also had trouble walking on uneven surfaces as she felt like she was going to fall. Linda also had a knee replacement before her cancer diagnosis. This impacted her abilities further as she had not regained full range of motion in her knee and still experienced knee pain. Linda sought out rehab for help because her son was going to be getting married. Her goal was to be able to wear beautiful dress shoes instead of her flip-flops and dance with her son at his wedding. So let's look at Linda's plan. As a therapist, I consider many factors when working with someone to develop a treatment plan to work towards achieving their goals. This includes hearing from the patient themselves. In cancer rehab, we do this asking you a complete questionnaire about how your symptoms are impacting your daily activities and quality of life. The next step is to assess your sensation, balance, and how you move. These are critical components given the connection between balance and fall risk. In a balance assessment with you, I would consider the intensity or the severity of the neuropathy in your feet. Is it only in the feet or is it felt up to the ankles and the calves? What does the neuropathy feel like for you? Is it a numbness or is it painful or is it both? Another factor can, to consider is autotoxicity, which is your inner ear, which is tied to some of the chemotherapies which cause neuropathy. Autotoxicity may affect your equilibrium making you dizzy or off balance when you stand up. Our treatment plan may be quite different based on what factors are impacting your balance. I will also assess your overall coordination, strength, and sensation. Can you tell where your feet are? Can you feel when they touch the ground? Do you use an assistive device, such as a cane? Cancer rehabilitation clinicians are also trained how to help you make modifications to help keep you safe and decrease your risk of falls. We will talk more specifically about safety in a couple slides. So let's get back to Linda. We performed a thorough balance assessment, which then allowed us to determine the starting point for her balance activities. In clinic, we began standing on one leg to help Linda find her sense of balance. We built on this activity as she improved to include movements such as walking a line and holding a ball while challenging her balance. Remember, Linda already had knee pain as well. We had to ensure we were doing exercises and activities that would not increase her knee pain and help her knee pain as her full body got stronger and her balance improved. During her assessment, I discussed Linda had hypersensitivity, meaning she felt things to the extreme. Stepping on a grain of rice felt like she was stepping on a rock. She learned how to do self-massage and stretching at home to reduce this overall sensation and sensitivity. Happily, Linda was able to dance at her son's wedding and was able to wear her beautiful dress shoes instead of her flip-flops. Once you've been evaluated by a rehab therapist for your neuropathy, here are some ways it can be treated and managed. It is important you know therapy is not a cure for neuropathy, but our goal is to decrease the severity and how the neuropathy impacts your function. We work to build your skills and confidence to apply strategies to ease your daily activities and work tasks. We talked about balance on the previous slide. Balance and ability to walk is a very important part of anybody's treatment plan that has neuropathy. We also want to work on generally strengthening, including your hands and feet muscles to support your posture and your body mechanics. Your muscles help keep you upright, which reduces your risk of chances of falling. This aspect of therapy can improve other side effects you may be experiencing. We utilize hands-on techniques, including stretching soft tissue mobilizations to help your body alignment and begin helping your nerves to feel new inputs. Changing the sensation you feel can help reduce the severity of your numbness, tingling, and pain. We use other sensory integration techniques, including taping, moving your feet or hands in rice buckets, rolling a spiky ball in your hands, walking on various surfaces, and a number of other sensory retraining techniques. Fine motor training can be a lifesaver for people with CIPN in their hands. It can help you button a shirt, tie shoes, write a note, and many more activities we need exact fine motor movements with. For some, 
making modifications to how they do these activities while their CIPN improves can ease the stress of completing daily life activities. And of course, we provide education to ensure you are able to manage your CIPN today and in the future. We empower you with tools to take control of how your CIPN impacts your function. I would like to focus now on ways to protect yourself if you have CIPM. The loss of sensation may lead to many safety risks. A few to consider are avoiding or protecting against extreme temperatures. Be cautious with using very hot water and always use pot holders. If water, if you are very, bleh, edit. I would like to focus, edit. I would like to focus now on ways to protect yourself if you have CIPM. The loss of sensation may lead to many safety risks. A few things to consider are avoiding and protecting against extreme temperatures. For example, be very cautious with using hot water and always use pot holders. If it is very cold out, wear gloves. Be sure to keep your rooms well lit and use night lights so you can easily walk between the room and reduce your fall risks. Remember to remove and tack down any loose rugs or bath mats. Always tidy up the house and declutter walkways. Be very cautious with using sharp objects due to the lack in sensation, especially in the hands and feet. And lastly, be very cautious with your footwear. Avoid heels as they may cause you to be unsteady. Be cautious with insoles that are too soft as they may also cause you to be off balance. Always use grips on your shoes. If you're experiencing pain across the top of your foot, Velcro straps or a loafer style shoe without shoelaces may be of benefit. And always examine your feet for signs of injury, such as abrasions, blisters, or irritation. Hopefully throughout this presentation, you have gained a better understanding of CIPN and how a rehabilitation specialist trained in oncology can help you achieve your life goals. We hope you enjoyed this presentation of Living Well Beyond Cancer, How to Function When You Can't Feel, Understanding Peripheral Neuropathy. I thank you so very much for your time today. You can learn more about Revital Cancer Rehab on our website, revitalcancerrehab.com. There are Revital Cancer Rehabilitation programs across the country composed of licensed physical therapists, occupational therapists, and speech language pathologists who are also certified cancer rehabilitation therapists. Each is able to take a detailed history and accurately evaluate your individualized cancer rehabilitation needs before, during, and after your cancer treatment. Our mission is to make cancer rehabilitation the standard of care for anyone affected by cancer to allow you to live your best life. And of course, I could not have completed this presentation without the help of the amazing researchers and clinicians throughout the country. And here are the references for this presentation. Thank you, Karen. That was a very informative video. We're going to start our live Q&A now. I'd also like to introduce, we have an OT, Certified Hand Therapist, and Certified Lymphedema Therapist, Certified Revital Therapist, Gabrielle Miskovitz is going to be available for those of you who may have questions specific to ADLs, function, your hands. So the first question I have for you, Karen, is I don't have cancer, but I got uh, polyperipheral neuropathy after back surgery. Can this help me? So hi, thanks for that first question. Um, again, when we do do physical therapy, we go through a thorough evaluation with our patients anyways. Um, so Again, even though this is not a cancer-related thing, um, peripheral neuropathy can be treated in the same aspect that we would treat it for the cancer patient. So we would take you through a thorough balance assessment if we're talking about um, looking at your feet. I'm assuming this is a low back, um, not an upper neck. Um, but we would go ahead and do the same um, type of assessment we would with a cancer patient um, and then retrain looking at balance. Um, our main goal as physical therapists and occupational therapists, as well as always to look back at function. Um, so to look at what we can do to help you regain and re-educate those muscles 
um, for reaction or proprioception, like we referenced in the presentation, that body's ability to um, respond to changes in surfaces, um, et cetera. So um, I would say in that aspect, searching out a physical therapist um, within our company as well, um, under the select medical um, blanket of therapists would be a good avenue to go or looking directly at that, like Revital, who are, again, a little bit more trained in neuropathy issues as well. Yeah, I think it is um, important to remember that, that um, not just cancer patients have to deal with neuropathy, and um, we can help. Uh, so yes, if you go to our website, you can figure that, find a, hopefully find a therapist close to you. Um, the next question is, please address the post-chemo likelihood of recovering sensation timeline for nerve regeneration. I know everyone is different, but please address it broadly. And this is from someone who is already in the Revital program. And I'll let you take that one too, Karen. Okay. Um, again, I'm happy to hear you're in the Revital program. That's a great place to start. Um, and again, I know you obviously acknowledge that everybody is indeed different. Um, our goal as Revital therapists is to give you tools to manage um, that peripheral neuropathy. There is no blanket answer um, for the timeline of how one person will recover to another, unfortunately. Um, but our goal as therapists is to give you the tools that you need to manage your symptoms, improve on that function and quality of life, um, and again, help with safety and function. Yeah, absolutely. Our next question is actually going to be for our OT expert, Gabrielle. Gabrielle, can you speak to us in some of the things you might have done? Someone wants to know how an OT could help them with their neuropathy and their meal prep. Sure. Um, so for um, neuropathy, specifically with meal prep, um, there are, depending on what the specific um, deficits in fine motor coordination are or sensation, um, you know, we would kind of just break down the task. Um, if it's difficulty holding a knife because there's cramping with sustained grasp, we can talk about a different style of knife, a rocker knife. Um, or ways of opening containers if there's some hand weakness or you can't quite grab the, the jar, um, different adaptive equipment to help open um, devices like that. Um, so it's really a, a very tailored approach based on the specific um, point of breakdown in the task. Uh, as an OT myself, I actually would far prefer the right angled knife for my wrist and I don't have neuropathy than the normal chef's knives that most of us use in our kitchen. You get a nice deep curvings with that. Mm -hmm. for sure. It's much easier to use. Um, okay, I have another question coming in. Uh, it's a little long, so let me edit a little for you guys, but let me get started. Okay, this one is from a cancer survivor of pancreatic cancer of nine years. Congratulations. They took multiple medications um, and now they do have neuropathy, mainly in toes. Uh, the sense of feet and toes, they feel like lead, Karen. Uh, they have not fallen. They're saying their feet are the worst at night when they lay in bed. Um, they just sort of feel as though they are dead. What can they do to deal with this sensation at night? And they are asking if there's any medication that can help with that. Okay, so first of all, like I would put a little plug for Revital Cancer Rehab. So this would be um, a great opportunity for somebody to seek out um, Revital Cancer Rehab. Um, what we do, and again, everything is tailor made towards each patient. So what we would do is assess, um, even if it's a one time only thing, just to give you tools, it's always a great idea to get that assessment from a professional um, because sometimes it's hard to really tailor make. Um, an exercise prescription without seeing somebody. Um, a lot that we've talked about is like a little bit of stretching and like the self massage. And that's what we've, that's what I went ahead and kind of trained my patient Linda on. Um, so she was like kind of that perfect example while well, we taught her some stretching techniques and then some self massaging techniques that just helped with like some of that sensation. It helped to desensify that hypersensitivity um, and also help with that sensation. 
Um, so I hope that answers that part of it with the night pain. Um, as far as medications, there really is no rhyme or reason. There's nothing out there that medically, clinically has been proven throughout research studies as far as a medication. Um, and that's why we're here today is just to kind of talk about how therapy can help you monitor and, and improve some of those symptoms. Yeah, and we would always encourage you um, to discuss any possible medications with your healthcare team. Um, but yes, it, it having worked with this uh, neuropathy as well, Karen, I think patients are a little surprised when we're able to give them some techniques that can help manage those symptoms so they can sleep a little better or walk the dog or what it is that's important to them. This one um, is a little similar and it may be the same answer, but it says, what is the best thing to do at night? when your feet are tingling worse than other nights. So again, I think it's kind of a similar approach. Yeah. Um, we've talked about some of the stuff as far as flexibility um, and just any soft tissue techniques to just try to lessen that hypersensitivity of the nerves firing. Um, but again, I think that kind of answers like the same question kind of sort yeah. of um but it's just it's hard because there's again no blanket one fits all answer um so that's what I would just say anything we could do tactile to try to help that yeah and so the next question I'm going to direct to Gabrielle and Gabrielle what are some of the um techniques you may use with someone whose neuropathy is really making their the sleep um difficult because their hands are burning at night? So one of the things, so it sounds like a similar question um, with that nighttime symptom management. Um, one of the techniques that um, I, people have told me is very helpful is use of a small a vibration tool. Mm -hmm. And it kind of overrides that sensation, the, the internal sensation that you're getting into the brain, um, but using the vibration kind of is a way of just in the moment modulating it. Um, and so patients that I've typically recommended it for the hands sometimes do also use that small tool on their feet as well. Um, and it does provide a little bit of relief that can last for a few minutes um, for you to kind of get comfy and settle into some restful sleep. Yeah, that's a, a great uh, tip. Our next question. I had to quit Taxel due to severe hand and foot neuropathy, and I am still dealing with both, but to a lesser degree. They were done with treatment in July. Does the neuropathy make injuries like a sprained ankle worse? I chronically sprained my ankle years ago, and now the pain is very bad and started when I started chemo. I'll let you take that one, Karen. Okay. Um, Again, because of how I would kind of look at this and assess as you're in a physical therapy clinic, because of that sprained ankle, we're going to want to look at what your strength was as well. So you may have a little bit of less ankle strength and stability um, on that ankle as well. Um, and so what we'd want to look at is your balance and assess that from side to side. Um, just with that chronic ankle sprain, you may have a lot less balance on that side. Um, which may make that pain come on a little bit more. Um, so looking at for you, you know, what's the fall risks with the lack of sensation on that side going to be on the chronic ankle sprain side versus the opposite side, um, which might be contributing to why that one, because it might be a little more unstable, why it's a little bit more um, more, more painful. But yeah. we would definitely want to assess that and compare it side to side in a clinical setting. I do find it in, I think parent, patients are sometimes surprised, Karen, that some simple balance and strengthening can actually improve the neuropathy symptoms, right? Because um, right. it seems a little simple. Um, I'm going to ask Gabrielle this one because I have a feeling she might have some experience with it. Um, do you have any experience with TENS treatment and neuropathy, Gabrielle? That I'm going to say, I have not used TENS um, for neuropathy on the hands um, because it's so superficial. I'm not sure that I would with a decreased sensation. Um, mm -hmm. So that I have not used in my practice before. I don't okay. know if Karen, you have any, anything you want to add? Yeah, Karen. Yeah, you know, I really like, I really have not um, used it clinically. And again, there's a lot of stuff that people do try um, that's out there, but 
within the scope of what's medically seen as effective. Um, it's not one of the things that's like, oh, wow, you have to try tons. Um, I just tend to probably do a lot more and teach people more hands-on um, skills to kind of work on that desensitization because it's easier. You then don't need any equipment. You're not buying more stuff. Um, so I, I mean, you have your hands and if they're doing okay, or if there's a significant other that can help you with that, um, it's easier than trying to go out there and spend more money and invest in more tools and gadgets mm -hmm. um, that might not necessarily even help. So. And I think all of us therapists have seen the patient that uh, buys everything they can find on Amazon trying to help. <laughs> and sometimes when they do make it into therapy, we say, you don't need that stuff. You know, yeah. maybe a, a frozen bottle of water or a tennis ball, or we tend to be pretty creative problem solvers um, on that front. Okay. Next question. I had lymphoma eight years ago. CIPN affected my hand and feet. Hands have mostly recovered. Some sensitivity remains. Feet are a different issue. Before I play golf, I try and do some balance exercises so I don't fall when I swing. Is there some other exercise I can do? That's up to me, right? Okay, so um, what I would say is obviously in our feet are very important. Balance is important. Um, as therapists in the Revital program, we're going to look at the whole self. So we're going to look at your balance. We're going to look at your ability like timed up and go out of a chair. We're going to look at different other functional tasks um, just to see what your general overall um, lower extremity strength and condition is. Um, so it might be something that you're working on the balance, but it might be, you know, something higher up the kinetic chain that you need to address that you're not necessarily directly addressing just with those balance activities. Um, so that's where an individualized assessment comes in where we could kind of gear that towards, hey, you know, you're a little weak in your core, you're a little weak in your glutes. Oh, this quad is a little bit weaker. Um, and then during that eval, like I said, we do do some other um, like walking tests you know, five times getting up out of a chair, um, just to kind of compare you to those age-related norms of where you should be. Um, so I hope that helps a little bit. Yeah, very helpful. Um, here is, these questions are coming in fast, people. Um, I had numbness on my left arch before cancer diagnosis. Taxol has increased it and brought it to the other foot and tingling in my fingers. Can the original numbness neuropathy be helped as well during my recovery by attending therapy? That's you again, Karen. That it's, it's me again. Okay. Um, Everyone's so, dealing so, with it in their feet mostly. So we're getting these feet. Um, so again, I think some of that, it's hard to assess um, because if we're looking at why did you have the original um, neuropathy to start with. So that would be kind of understanding and talking to your medical team. Like, I'm not sure if you ever had a definitive diagnosis of why that left foot was numb to start with. Mm -hmm. um, all we know is any type of neuropathy, um, we're going to treat it fairly the same. Um, so if it is truly coming from like a peripheral neuropathy, um, I would say there's a chance that it could get better. However, if it does not, that's where you'd want to mention it and definitely talk with your um, oncology or medical team to just say, okay, my neuropathy is now done and I'm better with that, but why do I still have this persistent um, neuropathy to my arch? So I think not knowing that first piece, like if you never had a definitive diagnosis on that from the start, it's hard to say what source it could be coming from um, to say how it's going to necessarily respond. Yeah, absolutely. Um, next question. Um, I've heard that acupuncture can help lessen neuropathy symptoms. Do either of you have any information about this? I can go. Um, I just, I know that if anything out there, there's a lot of different things that people like to try. Um, they're just, again, there is not a lot of definitive research that supports acupuncture or some of the alternative medicine approaches as far as being the end-all cure-all for neuropathy. Um, that's where we're here as clinicians to do what we can to help you manage and improve those symptoms so that you improve your function. Um, and again, anything alternative that anybody would like to try, um, I would always consult with any of your oncology team. Absolutely. Um, well, 
I, this is, a, I think, an interesting one, and I'm going to let either of you take it. Please briefly discuss some of the vision-related issues that may be associated with peripheral neuropathy. Some of the what? I'm sorry, the, the first. Uh, Vision-related vision issues. Oh, okay. So what we obviously want to look at is how our visual system plays into our balance. Um, so understanding that by focusing, like if we're just regular and we stand and we close our eyes, it's very important to understand how the visual system um, plays a role in our balance. Um, so understanding that um, is, is huge to understand why I envision loss can play a huge role in our fall and increase risks of falling. I always, Karen, say as an OT to patients when they're like, I don't know if I need to work on that. Well, when you're in the shower and you close your eyes to wash your hair is the time you do not want to lose your balance, right? Right. Uh, huge role. Okay. Next question coming in. Completed chemo in November 2019, immunotherapy a year later, have experienced CIPN ever since. In addition to physical therapies, are there any nutritional therapies that are recommended? And I think, honestly, this is another, um, that is a great discussion for your care team about some of them do have integrative oncology now, some of the practices that I work with, and they can provide some of those resources. Did anyone have anything they wanted to add to that? I would, I would agree. Like, I, I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate that I work at a large um, hospital in Chicago and I mean, just kind of talking with your, I mean, it's the care team and the integrative medicine and the nutrition mm -hmm. services that are available. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just kind of make sure you're talking to your team. Um, if not, I would kind of look outside of the box because I know even in our area, some of the um, cancer wellness centers also um, do help and have like certified nutritionists on site. Um, just to yeah, throw that services back on. I think this is an interesting question, uh, Karen. Does CIPN cause bruising on the feet? So again, what we have to think of, like, so how I would answer that, um, you know, you have to kind of think of if your feet are numb, are you stepping on things that you don't necessarily realize you're stepping on? Um, you know, do you have, if you have a little, uneven sock that you're wearing that can cause abrasions or irritations. Um, so being very, very cognizant. I know we talked about like being super cautious with your shoe wear, making sure you're in shoe wear that fits. Um, you know, do you walk outside and you walk on a grassy surface without a shoe on, you know, just being super cautious um, of how you're, how you're taking care of your feet. Um, so if you do have something and they're causing pressure, I think it can cause a bruise. Um, but again, if it's something that you're seeing multiple, multiple bruises, I would definitely talk to your, um, oncology team as well. Um, if it's like excessive or abnormal after you've inspected and ruled out all other, all other reasons for it. Mm -hmm. Um, this next question is going to be for Gabrielle. Um, Gabrielle, this person is having issues with buttons and earrings and necklaces. Do you have any tips or tricks to keep them looking stylish? It's very important, um, you know, to be able to have those um, self ways of self-expression, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there are for buttons, um, you know, sometimes it's priming those fingers, getting them moving with some therapeutic and getting some exercise in there and then going through and doing the buttons. Other times we adapt it with something like a button hook um, or even magnetic buttons, um, you know, depending on the level of um, challenge. Um, for, you know, earrings are always tricky and it depends um, on the specific earring, the clasp in the back. Um, and that, you know, when I'm treating, I will have the, the person bring in those items. So we'll work right. on it, we'll analyze it, we'll break it down. Right. Um, there are for necklaces, also magnetic clasps. Um, you don't want to wear anything super valuable with that magnetic clasp in case it gets pulled or tugged. Um, but you know, there, there are so many options out there, um, to facilitate, you know, that, that expression. Yeah. And, and I love the idea of bringing it in because I myself have some earrings that are much easier to get on than others. 
And I think, and then sometimes, I don't know if you do this, but I might just have them support their elbows so they're not holding their whole arm up and their hands function. Exactly, better. exactly. And yeah. once you bring all of that in, it might not even be the fine motor here. It might just be a support. And it's exactly, right. exactly right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, as therapists, we're pretty good problem solvers. And uh, usually those are the things that really get us excited about like uh, Gabrielle says, making you, you, um, trying to keep you going. Um, okay, we have one last question, unless if you have questions in the audience, put them in the Q&A box now, otherwise we will wrap up shortly. Um, the last question I will ask Gabrielle again, because she, I see her, so I have lots of appointments. How am I going to fit therapy in? That is a great question. Um, and on evaluation, you would ha have this conversation with your evaluating therapist. You say, listen, I, whatever the extenuating circumstances are, I'm working, I have crazy hours, I have this pull, I have other appointments. Um, it's a rigorous schedule, right? Mm -hmm. um, your therapist will work with you and tailor a program that works for you. Um, we want you to be successful. We want you to be able to participate consistently in all of your appointments. So we're, we will work with you, you know, whether it's, you know, the next two weeks are crazy, let's check in once a week. And then, you know, we'll see where we are after that. Um, we, it, it, that should not be a barrier to treatment. That is something that we, that we will work together on. I think sometimes too, Gabrielle, that yeah. patients think they might have done, say, therapy for a knee, where it's like three times a week for four weeks and you have to go. And um, when we work with those who are being impacted by cancer, we treat them at any point in their cancer journey. And so sometimes we might educate them prior to treatment and then they touch base after treatment. Like you said, sometimes it's Let's take off the day after chemo. Um, I have a patient at the moment that I have moved her care to the start of the week because she has chemo midweek, takes a few days to recover, and then we start over. Yep, so exactly. I, and we're very, uh, many of our markets, depending on your state, offer tele-rehab as well for those that don't feel safe coming in or unable to make it into a clinic. And there are many things we can do. Uh, a lot of cancer rehab is education. Um, so yes, that I would hope is not a barrier. Okay, I think this is going to be our final question unless someone sneaks another one in on us. Um, you talk about neuro neuropathy making feet and fingers numb. I have just the opposite situation. My fingertips and feet are hypersensitive to heat, cold and touch. How often do you find this type of symptom? Do you want to take that one, Karen? I can go, sure. Um, I, would say, I would say each person, obviously, we've talked about this. Each person is individualized. But when we've talked about that neuropathy and kind of one of the slides we had, you can get cramping, you can get the numbness, you can get tingling, you can get burning. Any of those hypersensitivities are still encompassed by part of that neuropathy. Um, mm -hmm. So I would say it's, it is a very, 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 very common side effect um, of having um, CIPN. Um, so it is absolutely not uncommon. Um, and again, we would, when we assess, we assess, you know, is it your hypersensitivity? Are you numb? Um, and I'm sure Gabrielle goes through and looks at that for adapting of the fingers. You know, are you numb? Do you need to be super cautious when you're cutting objects? And the same way I would look at it for like shoe wear and, um, you know, like my patient who couldn't wear the shoe across the top of her foot, but then eventually was after treatment, she had that hypersensitivity across the top of her feet and could only, only, only wear a flip-flop and then eventually was able to wear a more appropriate shoe. And I had a patient once who worked in a unheated warehouse and the cold just made her hands miserable. So we just sort of recommended because she had to lift all day, those really thin running gloves, you know, so not a big thick glove. And that really helped her symptoms. She was able to tolerate it and continue working um, just by, you know, a therapist saying to her, try these gloves out. Um, and again, we don't always know that things will work, but many times they do. Okay, we have another one. They keep sneaking in right towards the end. I have stage four cancer and my journey will never be complete. Will I be able to tr continue treatment as long as I can? Karen, you can sure. finish this out. 
Um, and again, I think this kind of goes back to how we were discussing um, as Revital and as trained oncology therapists, we're used to customizing treatment for people. Um, I'm assuming we're talking a little bit about. Um, I think like, they're asking, you know, if it's stage four, could we still, you know. Right. That's kind of how I was going to answer it. Yeah. So, so again, our goal is to just give you a little bit of more um, ability to function and, and live live the life you want to live. Um, so if that means being able to just like walk through a park with a spouse or a loved one or, you know, whatever is important to you, we ask those questions during that evaluation. So, you know, one person might have the goal to golf and another person might have, um, you know, like my patient, she wanted to go to her son's wedding and be able to dance. So, um, you know, it, it just, we, we do individualize it and we see patients about along the whole cancer continuum and spectrum. So absolutely. I think whatever and we they, can do to help people's journey. They may also have been wondering if physical therapy would be covered by insurance. And again, that is specific, but I have had many, many stage four patients um, that we have continue to see and have covered by insurance. Um, well, listen, ladies, it was a wonderful discussion. Uh, thank you to Karen Holtz for a great presentation, Gabrielle Miskovitz for joining us and giving us some OT tips for managing neuropathy. Thank you to our audience for joining us today. Please join us for our next presentation, which will be in December, and we will be highlighting survivors and talking about their tips and tricks for thriving during the holidays. You can register, watch past presentations, and locate a cancer rehab specialist on our website, revitalcancerrehab.com, or you can call 844-473-8485 to speak with a revital therapist and find out if cancer rehab is right for you. Please be sure to follow us on social media to stay up to date on new information, inspirational stories, resources, and upcoming events. We hope you enjoyed today's presentation. It will be available on our website, hopefully next week, if you would like to rewatch it or share it with friends. And we hope that you continue to live well beyond cancer.